New NBC News polling finds Robert F. Kennedy Jr. taking more votes from Donald Trump than Joe Biden in this year's election. In a one-on-one -on -one matchup, the poll shows Trump ahead of Biden by two points, 46 to 44 percent among registered voters. That's within the poll's margin of error. But when the field expands to include third-party candidates, Biden takes the lead over Trump, 39 to 37 percent. That's because 15 percent of voters who previously said they would support Trump now say they would back RFK Jr., compared to just 7 percent of former Biden voters who say the same. Uh, you, 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 never, you never know how this is going to break. In 1980, John Anderson... I kind Anderson, of get the thinking. Yeah, John Anderson ran... Well, yeah, they're conspiracy theorists. Exactly. John, John Anderson ran as a Republican against Ronald Reagan. Yeah. And Jimmy Carter, he ended up taking votes away from Jimmy Carter... Right. ...when his intent was to take votes away from Ronald Reagan. And so, again, in this case, so interesting. we're seeing the same thing happen. President Joe Biden's odds of winning re-election are the highest they have been in at least three months. On the website Predict It, it now costs 54 cents to bet on a Biden victory and 45 cents to bet on a Trump victory. The more likely an outcome is, the more, li the more it costs to bet on. Biden's odds have been steadily increasing over the past month after Trump's odd reached a high of 48 cents in early March. We should note, though, that the site's tracker only goes as far back as late January. Let's bring in former Treasury official and, good, and morning uh, Joe economic analyst Steve Ratner. Steve, I saw this yesterday. And before we get into all your charts, I know you, you actually show uh, these uh, just where the, the, the betting markets are because sometimes they can be more accurate than even polls. Uh, but thought about you yesterday because uh, Joe Biden has uh, made move, uh, quite a move over the last month or so. Yeah, I think there's no question by almost any measure that Joe Biden has had really a good month since the State of the Union. I think that has been mm -hmm. and may prove to be a turning point in the race, as you've shown your other polls. The, the betting markets, those of us who believe in markets, of course, believe that when you put real money down, even if it is a dollar, uh, you're putting some skin in the game, and they have historically been very accurate. They've had their misses, and more recently, for various reasons I won't bore you with, they have been a little bit less accurate than in the past. But nonetheless, this is a pretty significant move for the betting markets. They've been sitting there at roughly 50-50 for these two candidates for a long time. And so you are seeing some pretty positive green shoots, we can call them, I think, for President Biden and all of these numbers. Yeah. Well, you, uh, and, and we're going to we're going to get Steve to your charts in one moment. I do want to go though uh, to John Meacham. John, you you never never know how things are going to break. I, I I talked about John Anderson, 1980, a Republican fellow Republican who believed he was going to draw from Ronald Reagan. He ended up getting a lot of liberals and getting a lot of college students voting for him. He got his five percent, but that that came from Jimmy Carter, most of it. Um, and, of course, uh, speaking of RFK, we go back to 1968, something you and I have talked about a good bit. The Kennedy family still trying to figure out how after Bobby's tragic assassination, his votes, many of his votes, went to George Wallace and it still can't sort it through. So you never know how this is going to break. But at least in this NBC News poll, it certainly looks like one anti-vaxxer uh, is going to be, you know, and a conspiracy theorist, I guess I should say, uh, is going to be taking votes from another conspiracy theorist. That's certainly where sort of common sense barstool analysis would lead you, right? I mean, if you are a... Uh, if you're thinking about voting for an anti-vax uh, person, I don't think your second choice is going to be uh, the Democratic incumbent uh, who believes in science uh, and is a uh, politician who's arguing for a consistency with a constitutional and rational order. That doesn't seem like exactly where you would go. Uh, historically, look, you're right, uh, Wallace in 68, uh, John Anderson uh, in 1980, of course, Ross Perot in 1992, who got 19 percent, uh, still a huge debate uh, within Bush world. Uh, both the senior President Bush uh, believed that Perot cost him the election. When you dive into the data, it's, it's, it gets tricky. But when you have uh, an alternative to the duopoly, uh, you end up in a uh, very uh, 
chancy place, particularly because, and this is why every single vote counts, particularly when you're talking about such de minimis margins uh, mm -hmm. across seven or eight swing states. You know, 500 votes here, 500 votes there. And, you know, to paraphrase Everett Dirksen, suddenly you're talking about, you know, that adds up to the presidency of the United States. And so I think uh, everybody has to have, if, if I may, a Mike Johnson moment, a Liz Cheney moment. They have to decide right. this year, where do you want history to judge you? How do you want history to judge you? And I think that this is that important, really do. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.